Are you working on your author career, but struggling to get that first book published? Does the goal of being an author seem too lofty? Or thoughts of having multiple books and making a full-time living are as fantastical as living in Cinderella's castle? Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where aspiring authors can be heard. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have gotten their foot on the author career path. Hear what they've done to get there and where they want to go now. Settle back. It's time for a bit of inspiration and advice. Come listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. Yeah, I mean, I, now I have four books, so I don't know if we're going to nice. focus on any, any, any one of these individually or... Um... Let's just chat and see where it goes. Find out All what's right. been going on in the last year. All right. Do you mind if I sip my tea while we're chatting? Oh, Please go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers. If you got I'm a sorry, cool mug, beer. <laughs> if yeah, you got... it used to be it used to be much cooler. Now it's been washed so many times, you can't even see anything on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, David, uh, welcome to uh, Discovered Wordsmith Podcast again. Uh, it's good to see you, actually see you this time. How how have things been going for you? Oh, well, thank you, Stephen. I'm so glad to be here again, as you said, and. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to actually see you this time, and things have been well, you know, as as good as they could have been. Right, uh, crazy year. They were as good as they could be in this in this crazy weather, uh, crazy time. So right, right. Now, I believe last time we talked, your wife was commuting, and you were living. Um, uh, I was in uh, Madrid at the time. Was Madrid okay? much of the time but now we're actually we're back to munich which is where my, my boys were born um my boys are, are close to, they're going to turn seven in a couple of months so they actually started school nice 10 days ago here so that's you know on top of everything that's been going on lately uh yeah trying to nice. trying to figure out figure out uh, school in in a, in a foreign language and all that so it's oh it's, it's but that fun. must be fun <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, but uh, since then, of course, you know, many things have happened, and uh, part of the reason why we're back in back to Munich is because we don't we we she's not my wife is not commuting that much anymore. There's no point, uh, and then it it just made more sense to be here because this is kind of I don't know uh, for. For many reasons, uh, uh, we we consider this to be um, the optimal place for our family to be. Got it. Nice. Okay. So when we talked, you had written uh, book one of your project adventure series, and you were working on book two. And in the last year, even with moving and your boys starting school, you've got four books out now. So tell us what's been going on in your writing uh, to get four books in your series out. Well... Oh, the short the short answer is I've gotten better at it, <laughs> um, and yeah, book one was a great uh, learning experience, and but there's a learning curve to everything, and, and writing is no different. So, book one, when it was really finished and and out there, it, it just took so much. Uh, I learned so many things that I had no idea I would have to learn in order to 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 create uh, uh, you know something as complex as a, as a, as an actual book uh, as a self published uh, author um, no less I mean this is um, it's quite an undertaking and um, but then later on I mean the, the actual the act of creating books became super easy all of a sudden creating books writing them. Uh, and creating the the covers, the the you know the, everything that goes um, into a book, uh, front matter, and matter, all of that stuff, um, description, teasers, you name it, all that became because you know I, I've set it up with book number one and book one, and then everything, you know, all, all the subsequent books were just so much easier to to make to produce. Uh, and not just write. I mean, writing has become um, even more fun because, again, I now know more how to actually write a book, how to create an outline, how to um, how to use a single idea, a single image of a of an interesting scene, and 
basically build a book around it, you know. Um, so it's it's been it's been really extremely interesting to to see just how 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 uh, when when you when you you know when you uh, start working on something and 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 start creating uh, how it all comes around and how it all kind of fits into play into into all the pieces that kind of start fitting in right uh, right it's really interesting and it just gets easier then on the other hand and we can probably <laughs> have this as a as a whole different topic is what became much more difficult which is obviously marketing and sales and all that stuff um, okay so, so let, let's look at a couple of those so yes obviously uh you would hope the writing gets easier publishing gets a little easier you learn it mm -hmm. um did did you think about doing a different series a different book or have you always just wanted to write this series and write uh you know a whole bunch of books before even thinking of something else um this is the the this series because I, i'm not you know I'm not a schooled author. I mean, I don't know if there are, uh, if there is, a, it is such a thing, but I'm not. Uh, this is this 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 was a, a hobby, an idea, a challenge, if you will, which turned into something more serious, more professional. That's the story that happened with me. And of course, um, when I started writing book one, and then book two, book three, book four, it's just when I when I realized that now, yeah, now I'm. I can call myself an author because I know what I'm doing in that regard. Um, then I definitely started thinking about other projects that I would like to, to do <clears throat> because this, this series is still a very cool, and the way it's set up, it's an episodic series. Uh, basically, you can read you know, books in any order you want to. It, it really doesn't. Uh, there might be, but I always am careful of, Putting putting a, a few uh, you know nuggets of information here and there to to explain um, the series or the, the the characters or the you know the protagonists and the and the world that I've created. But pretty much you can you can read a, any any book uh, as a as a standalone almost. In that regard, it's very similar to uh, to Jack Reacher, for example. Okay. Uh, which is now what twenty six books or something like that, <laughs> right? And, yeah, exactly. And it's like in every book, there's a few nuggets of information about his background and all of this and that. But these and they, these books even go, uh, they 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 jump in in time. They go thirty years forward, twenty years back. It doesn't really. So, <clears throat> in that regard, um, this series. Project Project Adventure series that I that I created is uh, something that could go on, uh, you know, technically, um, yeah, it, it could go on forever. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it's it's probably not going to. Uh, and I had ideas of uh, starting something a bit more serious, um, maybe still in the in the middle grade uh, genre, but a bit more. Series, maybe like a standalone novel, uh, which again, uh, especially when you're a self a self published author, you have to think about the marketing and the you know the financial aspect, if you will, um, which is proving to be the most difficult thing in all of this. Right. Um, and then you know, series actually they at least have potential. So then. I, you know, but you can start working on a standalone no novel and then think about later on maybe how to turn that into a series. But I didn't want to start working on a new series, you know, uh, from scratch. I wanted to get like, a, I wanted to focus on creating, when I said, when I said earlier, something a little bit more serious, um, more, you know, depth of character, um, you know, just a longer book because my books, these books are, I mean, they're not short, but they're relatively short because they're right. just fun. They don't, they're just, they're just action, action, adventure. There's no, there's no big ideas behind, except, you know, friendship and, and loyalty. Um, adventure uh, brings to, you know, brings you to learning new skills and stuff like that. These are the very general ideas that are in, 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 the, in, the, in the project it, adventure books. Middle grade, typical 
typical of, yeah. exactly it's not but um as opposed to many other books in the genre that i've actually read you know my you know, competitors if you want to if you want to <laughs> if, if, if you want to call them that um there's always this you know very tragical aspect of of the protagonist and uh, there's always um death in the family uh, there's always uh, uh you know, health issues, there's uh, deep internal, uh, you know, pre, pre uh, uh, adolescent, uh, um, you know, the, the, the protagonists are basically fighting themselves. They, they have like these, these, these uh, huge uh, dramas basically going on in their heads. I don't, I don't do that. I, I'm not, I'm, this particular series is not that, but this is something that I would like to uh, tackle a little bit more in the future. Again, as a part of the the learning curve, as a part of the journey, you know, how to learn uh, how to create an even more compelling uh, characters or, or protagonists, uh, how to create an even an even more uh, how to put more depth into the plot. Um, you know more layers, uh, things like that. So uh, definitely, I am thinking about so, doing right. stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And, and you mentioned some things have gotten harder. So what's gotten harder? Definitely, definitely, <laughs> uh, marketing part because I was, I was this naive uh, fool thinking that you know if you <laughs> write more books and you put them up and you know and. and the algorithms are going to recognize it and something's going to happen and maybe somebody's going to, you know, books are going to find their own audience and all that. And it just, it just doesn't happen. Um, not for me anyway. Um, so I'm trying, I'm actually now working with, with some, with a professional uh, marketing and public relations uh, company. And we're trying to, trying to, uh, Really, really, um, you know, make the, the make a step forward in in my marketing and and public relations uh, efforts in order to improve sales because honestly, it's it's really tough. Like you, you can imagine creating, producing four, even though they're not very expensive books, but they're still four books, and you invest so much time and energy and and you know whatever you do. You have to pay for it, right. <laughs> and then and then there's no there's no income on your books, it's, it, or it's 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 not significant, and it's um, it's bad for morale. I would say <laughs> it's very bad for morale. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I definitely can understand that because everyone has that kind of thought in their head. Oh, I'm going to put this up, and people are going to love it. It's going to yeah. be all over. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of authors and books out there that they've written one book and then you, that's it. You don't hear anymore. And, and sometimes it even says book one or something uh, and they stop because it, it should, should be but it should say book only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, the fact that you've continued and you're making strides. So you're, you're, you're not only getting better, as you said, but I'm sure you're learning things. And each time you do something, you've gotten a little better to do it for the next time. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is that is one of the things that is really pushing me forward. And, and uh, the knowledge that, you know, every every book that I do is a, that little bit better. And I mean, honestly, I, I hear that from, you know, this um, – the small audience that I do have, uh, they they really love it, and and my editors. I mean, I know the, the progression, and you know, even they were they were really happy, or they were they were they were they enjoyed the stories. But there was always you know lots to do in in book one, book two not so much. But by the time I got to book four, like the first sentence of my editor was like, "You really have to stride with this book, like this this you already." You, you, you know how to do this now. I can't. There's no more, you know, deep uh, uh, developmental editing going on. I, I send the, the manuscript over to the editor, and she comes back already doing, you know, copy edit and like in line, just you know, fixing grammar and stuff in its like, you know, typos. So there's, I, I really, it makes me 
makes me a little bit proud, of course. Um, and on the other, on, the other, on one hand, on the other hand, it does uh, it does give you, you know, optimism to to move forward. As you said, as you said, I mean, there's so much, uh, so many authors and uh, books out there. It's it's incredibly tough to get uh, your books um, a large audience um, quickly. Yeah. Um, but now, as I said, I'm trying to work on. That's actually the reason why I'm now at only four books because I would have, at my pace, I would have been now, you know, starting book seven or something. Uh, but over the last couple of months, and well, more than a couple, maybe like six, seven months. Uh, I've been really trying to um, trying to focus on, on on some other things, and it's uh, it's taking away a little bit. So I, I can't wait for all this to be settled again <laughs> and, and you know organized, put into place, so I can actually continue right. with just the dividing part because that's the most fun part, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody wishes <laughs> they could just write exactly. Uh, well. The, the good thing is you've gotten a series and you've got four books out. So everybody says once you have several books out, you have more uh, things you can do, more marketing avenues open to you, mm -hmm. uh, and it helps. So ha when you came out with book two and then three, did mm -hmm. you see the sales from your previous books go up a little bit, like a spike to go along with the release? No, no. To be okay. perfectly honest, actually, from the beginning, even like, you know, book one, you know, it was bought up by by you know, my, my my friends, my relatives. Uh, it was the best sold book. Okay. And every next book is uh, was sold in fewer numbers. Okay. To the point where now it's it's really like, I mean, I, I, my sales are really not uh, not significant at all. So. Okay. Well, I, I'm curious to see yeah. with this marketing company and with coming out with like book five or something to see what that affects. So I'd love to hear more later uh, how things I, are going. I, I would love to. I would love to. Uh, yeah, to get back to you on that and you know have some good news for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I know these are in English. Are you releasing them in other languages and other countries? No, uh, in other countries, yes. I mean, through through Amazon. I mean, worldwide this, this distribution. Now, with this, with the new company that I'm working with, uh, I will soon be um, using Ingram Sparks and other uh, how do you call those like uh, ebook e outlets or, or the uh, platforms aggregators and e stuff. E yeah, distributors. Right there, Whatever yeah. you want to call them, yeah. It's it's um, so I am hoping to um, to reach a wider audience with that. But I mean, the book has or books have been sold uh, in I don't know at least uh, six, seven different countries, as far as I know. Right. What I could, what I could, what I could, uh, you know, see on on my reports. Um, Interface, yeah, the um, on Kindle, now, Kindle platform. So, but otherwise, otherwise, no, I'm not uh, thinking about translating books just now. Okay. Obviously, I would love to get to get to that. Make level. it worthwhile. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know how much. Like, I mean, this is also. I mean, it's also a matter of cost. I mean, I could get these books translated, you know, tomorrow. Not, I've asked around. I mean, I know. What that would mean, but it's just it's just not um, it's not feasible right now. It's just not uh... right. So, living outside of the U.S. is it difficult getting uh, handling the whole business aspect of it for the U.S. market? Because uh, Amazon, you know, that's their biggest book market is in the U.S. Well, I you know. Um... I would say yes. I would say yes. I, I I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I don't have okay. the experience or the you know the the in in market you know in inside of the inside of the industry knowledge uh, to be able to to really discuss this. 
But okay. my, I, I just my, my feeling is that yes, because for example, I don't have the opportunity to just you know to go around and talk to uh, teachers or librarians or uh, I mean I could, but again, I mean, it's it's difficult for me to to plan such a such a uh, trip and all that. Whereas if, if you're local, at least you can locally start doing that in your own town, um, and that is. Uh, you know, you could be lucky enough that one of those people that you can easily meet in your own neighborhood or in your own environment is somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. And maybe that kind of, you know, rolls the, 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 the whole story, the whole thing. And uh, because, you know, it's, it's, it is a bit more difficult. But that's why I'm using these guys now, trying to... Uh, get through to these very specific uh, uh, target audience, audiences because it's not, you know, you write for kids, but your, your, your buyers are grown-ups mostly. Right. That's a, that's a really important, you know, specific of this genre, of this uh, age group. Um, and, the, you know, the target, the, 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 uh, the market is twofold. You have, you know, your readers and you have your buyers. Right, uh, and the only you need to find basically people who connect these two, um, you know, separate groups basically, and yeah. these people are you know teachers, librarians mostly, people who can recommend uh, uh, books to both parents and to the kids, um, and and you know I don't have a, a clear clean access. To these people, and that's why I'm, one of the reasons why I'm using uh, now uh, we have a, a, yeah, a relationship, working relationship with these guys. Yeah, mar marketing books to kids is definitely a unique challenge and a unique mm -hmm. beast compared to just writing a thriller for you know the 45 year old market. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely a different thing you got to think about. Yeah. Uh, so you said you've got book four out, and you're working on book five, and I know this is an adventure series. Um, what is what takes place in book four and what are you writing about in book five because i know they go all over the place here well book four i will actually show you it's right here and i will show you the cover okay. and this might give you a little bit of an idea it's my favorite cover and it's my favorite book so oh, far nice and okay. it's got yeah. um it's actually so yeah it's it's set in a winter t winter time, and basically, so you know, obviously, there's uh, there's you know, there's frozen rivers and ice sheets and scrapyards and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, but it also it touches a little bit on the environment and environmental issues. Um, you know, there is a there is a homemade electric car in it, you know, e vehicle, so. Um, <laughs> There's a couple of things that I've just you know, nice. had a little bit of fun, uh, fun with. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's it 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 does. Well, it, I would I can't say that it tackles all environmental issues, but it mentions a little okay. bit of yeah. those. Um, so yeah, this is this is book four, and <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. And uh, book five is I've. I've I, you know, I'm just developing the story now and the outline, but this is going to have a little bit of art in it. Uh, there's going to be some, you know, nasty people who are trying to steal some beautiful art and uh, so on and so forth. So um, we'll see. Yeah. So you're definitely living up to the name, the Project Adventure. And uh, I, I think the book cover looks, you know, spot on for a middle grade book. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. It, it, I've, I've actually had... Um, what are they called? They're like the, the design critics or something yeah. like that, basically. Uh, and my book one cover, the Heart of the Island cover, was actually chosen to be uh, discussed and analyzed in one like online event. Uh, and nice. I had like this is the book book one. Right. Huh? I remember that. And one. it was a it was really praised as like you know. It's so like I love this for the genre. It's like you know, and that's that's what it is. I mean, this is not a serious cover, but for the genre, for a nine or ten year old kid that picks it up, it you know, it, it, it tells them the cover tells them a little bit of what they can expect in the book. There's always this mystery. There's always you know, there's these shadows lurking in the back in the background. So uh, 
yeah, I mean, uh, I was, I'm, I'm very happy with how my covers uh, uh, look like. So I think that's, uh, in all honesty, this is, you know, a part of the, the whole process, a part of the journey. I didn't want to just um, write some books and then, you know, and then you put them in a, in a cheap cover. It needs to be a whole product. Uh, right, right. It needs to look good and when, when you know, do, uh, not disappoint uh when they actually read it, you know, so that's the, and I also, I can show you now, if, if you have just a little bit of time, this is yeah, my, yeah. this is book three. This is, this was my personal, this is my homage to, you know, basketball and it's my sport. Okay. So. That's yeah, a, that's so a nice cover see. too. Yeah. yeah I, so I, I, I kind of did the same thing. I've got a uh, cartoonist that lives uh -huh. uh, it kind of in the local area that I uh, employed to create a cover. Uh, and I think they came out really nice. Uh, and I found, and this is one of the things I've learned that the guy who does the drawing for the cover, if you get one custom, doesn't necessarily have to be the same person that puts all the lettering and stuff on, uh, you know, oh, yeah. because I talked to him and he was like, I have no clue, you know, that I can make whatever picture you want me to. Uh, so it, I, that's when I realized, oh, that makes sense because you don't have to. And if you go to a book designer, a cover designer, I should say, they'll say, uh -huh. well, what picture do you want? And you choose picture. And a lot of times they'll combine a couple or manipulate them. But uh -huh. the cover designer isn't the one making the pictures. And, yeah. you know, just in my head, uh, you know, it took me a minute. So that's, that's one of the lessons I've learned. Um, yeah, I know. But I I think know. This you, is... you can get the best of both worlds that way then. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Because it, exactly, this is you know, I learned that uh, as well uh, with my first book. I was like looking, with, you know, the cover designer, and she was like, "Oh no, but uh, art director, you know, I'm not an illustrator." I was like, "Okay, hold on." <laughs> so wait, dude, are you telling me that I need uh, an illustrator as well? well yeah, of course. <laughs> so that was like, okay, then let's 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 uh, try to figure this out. So I had an, an art director, you know, a person that did the design of the cover and everything and basically through I would I would give her the the idea of what the cover should be generally. I, it's it every cover is basically a scene or a mix of a couple of important scenes, you know, that, that give up the, the, the feel of the book. And then from there, from there, she would then create like very rudimentary, very rudimentary, like crude drawings, just you know, um, just to put things in perspective, you know, and 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 very just just literally just drawings. And then from there, then we would develop that, and then we would go to an illustrator that he would then put it all together, you know, in a in a proper illustration, the colors and everything, you know. But this was. It's a process. I mean, that that's it's it, it especially for middle grade because you got to hit that just right. Uh, you know, middle grade doesn't uh, usually have the same type of covers that young adult have, even though there's only a year or two difference sometimes mm -hmm. between the readers. Um, so it's definitely something different, and that that's again one of the things i learned <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. looking at them. yeah i think kids at this age they do judge the the book by the by its covers. very much so yeah to, to, to a much much uh, much uh, you know higher <laughs> percentage or extent than, right. than grown-ups would so, well you yeah. know i look back at the hardy boys books that i used to read it always had frank and joe it's like some action scene uh and it's like oh you know that looks cool i want to read what that one is Exactly, and I, I've been told many times that my books are reminiscent of the Hardy Boys. Oh, really? That's, oh, that's exactly. a good compliment. That, that that's exactly what they're, they're, they are. I mean, obviously, there's a million other authors of books like that. So, but I mean, uh, you can't really do uh, yeah, something extremely new in in in, in right. middle grade. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I mean, again, they're usually pretty voracious readers so if they like you know hardy boys they will read the whole series in yeah. a week or two and then they want more just like you know some adults do so uh that's the one good thing about middle grade once you hook some readers if you've got the books they'll get them and they'll read them you know look yeah. at look at the goosebumps books from 20 30 years yeah. ago you know yeah, he wrote still... one a month for like six seven years 
Yeah, yeah, that is that is um, definitely uh, it's a high bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, David, uh, I I appreciate you taking some time talking to us, giving us an update on what's going on in your uh, writing. Uh, do you have any? advice for authors uh now that you've been doing this for longer you've gotten more books uh do you have any advice you would give some uh the authors listening um i was obvious i was thinking about what to say if you if you ask me this question <laughs> i think again i think i think you asked me this question before maybe or i don't know maybe somebody else did um I think persistence. I mean, you just have to. You have to stick it out. You have to be, you know, uh, persistent and just get better. Um, which you do if you're working on it, if you're writing, and if you're doing all this other stuff. Mind you, we're talking about you know self-published uh, authors here. I I, I, I cannot say I, I've never been public, uh, published by by a publishing house, so I, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> Maybe I'll find out someday. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe uh, the marketing company will help you uh, get your book so you won't have to worry about it. Exactly. Who knows? Yeah, that doesn't. I mean, um, that's that's not the uh, the the answer that you know you you, you want to hear. <laughs> well, I don't know. Persistence, uh, like I said, you know, I, I know some authors that will spend four or five years on a first book they'll put it out and then they sell 10 and they're like well that was a waste they get disappointed and they quit so i mean persistence you know you're an example right there you're working on your fifth book right now so i can tell you that i've been uh, sales have been nothing but a huge huge disappointment for me absolutely huge disappointment so far but i'm still you know i'm i'm still working on it i'm not gonna let it go just because i'm now I have everything, you know, covered. I mean, I, I, I know everything about, there is to know, well, not everything, obviously, but I know so much now that it's like, I, it, there's just, there's no, there's no excuse for me. I cannot stop now, you know? <laughs> now, right. I've gotten, now I've gotten to the point where I know how to write books. I know that the books are good because, you know, kids have been telling me that. I mean, kids from all over the world, some kids that are, that are not my friends <laughs> or my friends' kids have bought these books and they bought all of them and they said, like, these books are fantastic. So there's something to it. There's got to be, you know, it's, it's, uh, you just need to stick it out. You just need to... Persistence you know, and keep going. Just, just keep going. And yes, it's frustrating. And yes, uh, this part, I don't really enjoy doing the... Uh, the I mean, it's 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 great, like you know, these interviews and chat to people, and that's fine, that's great. But when you have to go like on Instagram and th figure out how to post something that's very cool, that's not who I am. That's not what I, what I do. It's very difficult for me to do that stuff. Some some for some people that is, you know, it comes naturally to them, like to play on Instagram for an hour. I, I can't do that. I mean, I have better things to do with my life than Instagram. <laughs> But you know, don't don't tell that to my to my to my target audience because they're on on Instagram actually. <laughs> yeah, no, the kids move to different social media like every other week. So you know, who knows? Parents, but parents are parents, young mothers parents. Uh, or fathers who are buying the books. They're on Instagram. So yeah, you know, um, or, or well, uh, influencers uh, or whatever you call it. Oh, I, I've got a Instagram for the same reason. I'm like, oh, a lot of parents are on there. So after this episode, it's probably going to be a little bit, a couple weeks, but uh, I'll put a clip up on my Instagram and I'll share it to you. So together, Great. maybe we could pass it off a little bit to some new people. That's Absolutely. The goal. Yeah. Absolutely. Because now, right now with these guys, uh, they're doing some stuff with my, uh, well, my Facebook page as well. And, uh, and this Instagram, they're posting a little bit. So, um, you know, I'm getting a little bit more of uh, you know, traffic. There. Nice. So definitely, uh, yeah. Just well, I'm, I'm happy to help in any way. And it's uh, yeah. This we're all in this together. There's no real competition here. I mean, books and everything here. There's just you know, if we, the the common goal for all of us is to get more. In our case, more kids to to read. 
Right. Um, you know, there's you know, there's new there are new kids coming you know, every day. I mean, right. you know, there's more and more. There's more and more people on this planet. So right. It's not like we're losing uh, 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 the audience or the readers. There's more and more of them. So. Well, I, I mean, I, I definitely appreciate talking with you and you saying, you know, it, it, it's not going as great because part of the goal of the podcast is to actually help and inspire other writers. Because for me, when I was on some of these Facebook groups and they're like, well, yeah, I made $45,000 this month. I'm like, my God, I can't even get one book out. And yeah. they made it seem like, uh, oh, this is easy. Everybody should make tons of money. And then I'm not doing it. And I felt like, well, I'm a, I'm a failure, but I'm not. Yeah. And I, I am, I, I mean, I wish you the best. I do wish things for you to go better, but it's, I think it's also good for others to hear. Not everybody just snaps their fingers and the books take off. There's work, as you said, persistence, and uh, you got to keep doing it if that's what you love. I would, I would to, to be, again, I would just uh, have to say again that it's just, you know, keep doing it. If you like doing it, keep doing it because I'm, I'm only doing it for like a year, two years, maybe now. Uh, yeah, maybe two years now since I actually started thinking about writing. Um, and I'm now in a position where I have four books and I'm like mad at myself for not having more because I've been kind of lazy and doing other stuff lately. <laughs> <laughs> so, Serious, it is a, so you can do it. It's not, and then you know, hope for the best and keep working, keep giving your best. You can't tell, you know, what future, what tomorrow is going to bring. You just can't tell. You know that, for example, people like uh, was it Stephen King or no John Grisham? Stephen King wasn't a bestseller at the, at the beginning. John Grisham, he was selling. Uh, he would uh, use a photocopier in uh, his office and then sold his books out of his uh, trunk of his car. He was trying to sell books out of the trunk of his car. I mean, these guys have, you know, busted their, you know, rear ends to to, to get to the, the point where they are today. I mean, I'm not saying that I want to or need that or anything, you know, that's, so, but, you know, having a, a satisfactory writer's um, career might be you know a goal worth fighting for because it's it's in the end it's a great job yeah i agree totally it's much agree, better man. than having a boss absolutely apart, apart from your wife you know i was gonna you know. say we've got wives that's all the boss we need right <laughs> exactly yeah. all right well david hey it was great catching up with you uh we'll keep in touch and maybe we'll hear back from you uh in a year or so and see uh how things are going better for you Absolutely. And uh, just to uh, let you know, I am planning on recording uh, um, a chapter Perfect. for you. Uh, as you can see, I actually marked a couple of these with, you know, Uno and stuff cards. Nice. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm definitely, as soon as I get settled down in the, in the new uh, office kind of a place, I'm going to uh, make a recording for you. Uh, I can even use this, right? Or... Yeah, Same I mean, answer. if uh, if you want to uh, uh, set, you know, set, sh drop me an email. We'll set something up. We can get right on here, just like we're doing now, and you can read and we can uh, record it. That, I would, I would just uh, record it and send you the file if that's you know whatever. I just have to figure out what's the best way to do it, but uh, no worries. I mean, it's not going to be long. I mean, the ch chapters are not that long. So right, right, yeah, perfect. It's not going to be a I long audio. All right, All right, thank you so much, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. And you have a great uh, uh, week, a great couple, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, good it's luck with Monday. school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you for listening to Discovered Wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.